Hey everyone, welcome back to Cyberpunk 2077. Glad you could make it. Last time out, we had a bit of a tough time with uh, a side gig, let's just say. Regina asked us to infiltrate this compound right over here, just on the dock side, on behalf of a televangelical, as she called him, uh, one of the, uh, the TV network preachers, whose son was taken and murdered and the footage edited and released to the public. Unfortunately, that footage was so heavily edited that nobody could get any clues as to uh, what actually happened to the poor lad. However, we went into that compound to pick up the raw footage of the, uh, the actual event itself. Thankfully, we couldn't watch it. And upon breaking in, we found that it was... It had been scrolled or recorded by some unknown person, put in a dead drop, and picked up by two brain dance editors inside that compound there, who ironically enough were father and son themselves, and we had a tough decision as to uh, what to actually do with those guys. Um, but in the end, I think we made the right choice. I think Night City is a, a marginally better place without them. Without the demand of uh, of that sort of footage, or at least lessening the demand of that sort of footage, uh, going through the process of being recorded, I guess. I'm not going to lie to you, that was a horrible, horrible side mission, and um, <laughs> it plagued my brain for a night or two afterwards, let's just say that. Hopefully, we're going to find something a little bit more chipper and cheerful today. We're going to have a little shopping trip to the market. So... I said before we uh, visited that sidekick there, um, I'd noticed that there were a few stalls. So we've got a weapon stall over here. Uh, what's that called? Lots. Uh, lots weapon store. Or perhaps it just means there's lots of weapons there. I don't know. Um, we've got a little food place here. And then further along this way, there we go. There's a... Uh, excuse me. There's a, uh, a little pharmaceutical store. There you go. The one that says pharmaceuticals. Kind of gives it away, really. Um, I've just noticed they're all actually... Huh. They're all actually built into repurposed shipping crates. That's really cool. And I suppose it makes sense uh, being right on the dockside here. However, before we get into that, I noticed that there's a brand new side job. That wasn't here before because we only had this, uh, this side gig from Regina that uh, we had access to in this area. Brand new side job right here. Danger moderate. And it's literally there apparently so let's go and take a little look there's a lot of people doing a lot of work Jesus. on a lot of vending machines no no just v oh it is not mine none of this me cold dead metal all of it oh what? wow what have i done to deserve this to fall victim to his it itches should it itch why do i feel anything it it is nothing but I'm feeling metal. Calm down. <sighs> Forget your own soul. You must save his. Right, now help! I'm intrigued. Someone please help me! Anyone! So what has happened to this guy? Because he is... He's a Buddhist monk, and we read a, a shard earlier on. Um, someone was interviewing a Buddhist monk, and they essentially said, whilst they don't shun implants completely, they would never actually possess any themselves, because they, they are sort of, by definition, without personal possessions. So, why is this guy chromed up? And why is he so upset about it? I'm really intrigued. Are you, uh, are you okay? Don't you take a vow against chip and implants? Of course we do. You think I did this to myself? Oh. I apologize I cannot bow in greeting. I am still adjusting to my situation. Hold on. Somebody forced you? Not just me. My brother, too. They drugged us. Desecrated my body. Wow. And all the while, they mocked me. How can you do this to a fellow human being and still mock them? Jesus, look at his face. It's like he's had the whole front part of his face removed and then glued back on. Makes no sense. Who'd go and do something like this and why? We were out begging for alms when... when they approached us. They laughed at us and asked if we would take implants as a donation. 
Oh shit. They looked more machine than human. I was about to say, I've got an idea. They told us they would improve us like tools. Maelstrom. Maelstrom, absolutely. Yeah, this had them written all over it. I mean, we found that poor Valentino's guy before, didn't we? Where they'd forced implants into him and sent him Cyber Psycho. Um, you said that they've got your brother. How about your brother? He's still with them? Yes. I was first. Then they were trying to decide how... how to modify him. Ew. You look like someone who can reason with these people. <laughs> I beg you, please, help my brother. I only hope it is not too late. I do not wish for him to end up like... like I have. I mean, it depends on your definition of reasoning with them, I guess. Um... No, V, come on, have a heart. I'm, I'm not gonna start bargaining with this guy for his brother's life. I'm gonna kill those assholes, I'm here to help. Well... <sighs> Again, it, it hasn't really stood for much over the last video or two, but we do have some sort of uneasy truce at the moment with the, the Maelstrom higher-ups. So I'd rather not go in guns blazing. Fine. I'll help. But just so you know, things might get ugly. Maelstrom doesn't mess around. There must be some other way. Help us, please. But without any bloodshed, I beg you. I'll see what I can do. Either way, your brother's getting out. I do not know how to thank you. They're keeping him in a shop just north of here. Okay. You shall find it next to the road along the docks. Oh, not very far away then. Wow. Ah, yes, Biku. That's right. Um, that's what they were. Uh, that's what they were referring to themselves as in that uh, that interview shard that I picked up previously. Okay, speaking of shards, we've got a couple here. However, it looks like we received some information as part of that exchange. So. What have we got? Was it... Oh, here we go. It's the actual mission itself. Okay. Save the monk. Among the handful of things that really piss me off, I'd say picking on the little guy for funsies is pretty high on my list. If I could save this monk and, a, and scrap a few tin boy maelstromers along the way, I'd say sign me up. If you feel the same and hurry your ass up, maybe you can even still save the guy. Oh, hurry your ass up. So, sounds like time's against us. Let's see. Where's it actually take... Oh, literally just the end of the dock. We could hoof it there on foot. Right, um, let's take a look at these shards whilst we're here. So what have we got? Buddhism and cyberware, a perspective. Ah, interestingly, uh, yes, this is the interview that we've read before. Strange that we actually picked it up. This must be um, here specifically as part of this mission, sort of hard-coded in, um, because normally the uh, hide red shards mod should have gotten rid of this. Okay, so we've read that one previously. That was the, uh, the interview I was referring to. This one's new, though. Your God, your Kiroshi. The Catholic Church has never taken an official stance on implants, but the significant presence of all matter of bodily modifications among the clergy would seem to success, just like in other branches of Christianity, that implants are completely acceptable in the eyes of the Church. The Mormon faith holds a different view. According to their tenets, no God-fearing Mormon can sport body-modifying implants, whether for aesthetic or functional purposes, the sole exception being life-supporting or other strictly health-related cyberware. Oh, now that's interesting. Bit of a juxtaposition to, although I can't claim to be an expert by any means, but in my mind, a bit of a contrast to today's Mormon society, which basically shuns pretty much... Uh, all technology. I might have that wrong, actually, thinking about it. Maybe they can sort of go to hospitals and utilize technology uh, in that regard if their life depended on it. Anyway, I'm going completely off beast. When it comes to the Islamic faith, imams regularly speak out against cyberware, though actual possession of bodily modifications is not officially prohibited. Judaism does not have any provisions on implants, with the exception of Hasidic communities, where they are regulated individually by the community's Zadik, I think that is? Hmm. Interesting seeing different, uh, different views of different faiths. Right, don't you worry, good sir. We're going to get your brother back, um, one way or the other. You said that you want to try and not have bloodshed if possible. I suppose that's um, admirable. I'll see what I can do, though I make no promises. I just wanted to very quickly focus on this guy's scarring here. I noticed a few of the monks around Night City have similar sort of scars, and I wonder whether a number of them actually had 
sort of quite uh, extensive cyberware before they actually joined the uh, uh, the Buddhist monk order, I suppose it is. Oh, take a look top left at that stamina bar. Stamina bar has disappeared. And that little pink icon has now appeared next to my health bar. I've been wondering over the last couple of videos exactly what that is. It looks like it's just plain old exhaustion. So if I'm still sprinting when my stamina bar hits zero, I become exhausted. And my walk speed and my sprint speed are significantly affected. Uh, but as soon as the stamina bar reaches the top, away it goes. And we're back to normal. Back to normal speed again. Um, so that, I think, is part of the Sensible Stamina and Athletics mod, which means that your stamina is a lot more tied to your athletic skill and your athletics level. Um, but something that's rather nice as well is if I had actually gone back to walking just before that stamina bar expired, I would have got a nice little boost to my athletic skill. Uh, right, so this is the place. We've got to save the monk from inside this warehouse by the looks. Hello. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Well now, greetings. Can I, uh, don't mind if I just breach protocol, do you? Oh, thank you kindly. Right, let's take a look. Uh, ooh, we've got a bit of flexibility on this one by the looks of it. 1C, 1C, 5, 5, 1C, or we could reverse it. So 1C, 1C, 5, 5, 1C, lovely. Get both levels, so we get... Ice pick as well. Oh, breach protocols leveled up. Very nice. Increases components acquisition. Right. Uh, now, let me... S oh, wonderful. Target's not hackable. What about that piece of hardware behind you? Ah, there we go. There are ways and means. Right, let's see who we've got and where. So that ping quick hack is uploading to the main server that they've got here. Right. One, two, three... Oh, three? Just three? Mm, all right. Nice and easy. I want to try... Try and get an eyeball on... Uh, where... Where we get into this place, actually. Mm, right, this guy is quite incessant. Can... I notice there's a laptop here. Can we distract? We can... I'm wondering if maybe... Let's just ping again. I'd also like to run a distract enemies off of this, if I can. Oh. Insufficient RAM. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> We've used up all our RAM there. There we go. Let's run a distract. That'll bring him over. And then we can go up. And hopefully over. Ah. No, that didn't work because he's still looking my way. Me being too keen. Oh, looks like we're going loud then. <laughs> now, something I hadn't considered previously. Oh, hello. What can we do to you? Can we sign up to burn at you? No, we can't. Unsufficient ram. Okay, never mind. Jesus Christ, who are you? Oh, he's just healed. He just healed in the middle of battle there. Damn it. Oh, we didn't get our healing quick enough. Nuts. Hmm. So the reload took us all the way back over to the monk. So I've just uh, come back over on foot. I'll drop a quick save here just in case we need to reload. But uh, hopefully we won't necessarily have to load back in. I'm going to head up. Oh. What was that noise? <laughs> Sounds like you smashed something. Okay, that was slightly different. Uh, let's breach protocol our guy here. And... Uh, uh, okay. So we've got a different combination. Looks like we can't secure both. Let's go for the uh, the mass vulnerability. So 551CBD. 55... Here we go. 5 1C BD. So that's going to mass vulnerability him. Whilst he's uh, scratching his head, wondering what's just gone buzzing through his brain, let's ping this terminal. And uh, whilst that's cooking, we're going to head round the outside. So we're going to completely. Yeah, we're going to completely ignore that way. Uh, ooh, what's that? Hmm. 
I think that would just lead to the back of where he's standing. Um, <laughs> I don't know what happened to that ping. It doesn't seem to have highlighted anyone. Hello, what have we got here? Technical ability 506. So we've got a grate. Yeah, it looks like we... It, there's no sort of connectivity to it, so we can't override anything. And uh, we don't have the technical ability to open it. I mean, if push come, Hello. If push comes to shove, we could use that as an entrance, but... This looks like it might do just as well. Ooh. I can hear a camera nearby. No, nope, not here. That's oh hello there. Right, let's get you tagged. Let's let's run another ping because the first one doesn't seem to have done anything constructive. Ooh. Oh, they're... <laughs> they're... Oh, hello. There's a guy down here. Right, there's a guy directly beneath us. And there's a camera there. Crap, right. Let's, uh... Let's camera control this quickly. All right, that'll target him. We've got... So we're right up here. We've got... Um, that... That drop attack, haven't we? That we unlocked an episode or two ago, but I've I've not actually used it. I don't know how you use it. I don't know if there's like a a button prompt as you drop. I'm try I'm just targeting this guy. Oh, he looks like he's about to turn around. I'm trying to keep a target on this guy so I can use it. Um I mean, in for a penny, in for a pound. Let's drop down and see if we get a prompt as we approach him. Whoop. Peter Phil! Oh nice! <gasps> shit. Shit, 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 shit. <coughs> For a non-lethal over here. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic! So there wasn't a button prompt. And you literally, it's just automatic. If you drop onto them and they're unawares, you take them out. That's beautiful. Right, we need to very, very quickly just run another ping. I didn't actually pay attention to where anyone else, anyone else was last time. Uh, still thinking. Still, th I don't know where it's thinking or how it's still thinking. Right, so we've just got three guys over there. Uh, one of which, presumably, is our guy that's still standing outside. Right. <sighs> that was awesome and really handy. Uh, so let's pick up some weapons here. Let's grab control of this camera again and see. I didn't notice if there were any more that we could take control of. Yes, there are. There's multiple down in the bottom left there. Uh, where's this taking us? Hmm. Uh, I'm thinking this might be just around the corner from where we currently are. Looks like there's no one else to take a look at here. Why are all the cameras pointed up? That's not how cameras should work. Let's tag you. Hmm. Let's tag you. Gang Ironstormer. I'm thinking this guy's possibly the leader. So he might have been the guy that was shouting. Oh, hang on. Is that our monk? I think that might be... Yes. Okay, we can't really see him properly, but it's tagged in the box on the right. Biku, so this is our guy. This is our um, this is our Biku friend's brother who's uh, under attack at the moment. And look, all the cameras are facing upwards. Why is that? I didn't disable them. Huh, there we go. Right, so this one's... That's the camera we were just looking through. Here's our... Ooh, he's an... Ugly son of a bitch, isn't he? Look at him. So this guy is our potential leader. He's the guy that's going to be cutting up our Biku buddy here. Uh, in fact, looking at him, he looks pretty much untouched at the moment. We might have just saved this guy's skin, quite literally. And then this takes us back there. Okay, cool. Right. <laughs> I mean, half the fight. We've got these two guys down. Uh, so I think... Yeah, he's behind crates there. So there's the other camera. Let's see if I can take control of that. There we go. Don't need to look through it. That'll just bring it on side. Um, so we should be good to just wander through because there was no one here. Fantastic. Oh, there's another one up here, isn't there? Hold on. Is there? Was there? 
Oh no, it's another two in the next section, isn't it? I think. Hold on. Just quickly double check. Yeah, this is us. That's in the next section. That's in the next section. Back at the start. Cool. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't going to set off any alarms. Just uh, meandering my way around here. Right, that's... Oh, that's the other side of that panel that we couldn't open. So, what do we want to do? Do we want to take high ground here? What is this? This looks like a thing. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's a microwave. It's an exploding microwave. Never leave home without one. Right, let's uh, let's hop up onto these crates. Can we squeeze? Yes, we can squeeze. Uh, oh, are we going to be seen here? I don't think we are, are we? Uh, oh, one thing I keep forgetting. I meant to mention this before. One thing that I keep forgetting is that whilst you need to actually target and control each camera to bring it into onto your side to ally it you can do that from other cameras so for example this one can see that camera and can camera control it and then this one in turn can see that camera and can camera control which should by rights, have made those two cameras both allies now. Um, I'll probably be completely shown up in a moment when I get detected by both simultaneously. Oh, tits! Ooh! Sneaky! Hmm. Could you look down again for me, please? There we go. Oh, don't turn around! Don't turn around! Hoo <laughs> hoo! <laughs> All right, that's you, Dan. Uh, let's just check that camera. I think it's friendly. I can't tell. Why aren't they casting any lines out? Well, we'll tell soon enough, won't we? Right, let's see if we can take... Oh, shit. Oh. Nice. Nice. Not too bad at all. Right, my Biku friend. Um, oh, hello, that looks rather nice. Clear view of sight. Right, my Biku buddy, what is that? We'll take a look at that in a moment. Um, be free. Oh, wait, he does have scars. He's got scars on both arms. Like I said before, I don't know whether that's from what the Maelstrom had done here. They look like old scars. I think they're probably from when he had cyberware removed, when he first joined the Buddhist Order. Um, ah, of course, of course. What a fool. It's telling me I still need to defeat the Gangoons because we've still got our man outside, haven't we? I'm not sure why we can't, why we can't even say hi to our Biku buddy. But uh, no matter. Let's sneakily snoo up on our chappy here. Here he is. Busying himself with the consumption of alcoholic beverages, the bad man. And go to sleep. Ha <laughs> ha That's our Gangoons defeated! Nice! Okay, we had a bit of a false start, but that wasn't too shabby in the end. Right, let's take a look at this terminal that I was itching to uh, to read earlier on. We've only got one message on it. Let's see. Oh, porno BD. Porno brain dance. Fox sex. Real Fox. That was, uh, that was worth the effort. Ooh, we turn off! Do you... Implantations against my police. Please, I do not want that. Calm, dude. Calm. I'm on your side. I'm here. Oh, that's better. Um, I'm here on uh, behalf of your good brother. Calm down. It's over now. I'm not with them. So, what are you doing here? What happened? Uh, I'm here to get you out. Glad I got here in time. Are you okay? Did they do anything to you? I was lucky. They could not decide which implant would be. Funnier. Yeah, so I heard. Cyber psychos. The lot of them. One, one of them wanted to remove my jaw. The uh, thought hey. itself gave me shivers. Thankfully, did not get the chance. To what do I owe this intervention of yours? Uh, heard you call out for help. Um, 
Well, yeah, but only because I was directed here by your brother, but okay. Was walking by and caught some lame jokes about metal monks. Thing about Maelstrom, they're never just joking. When I heard you call out, I knew there was no time to lose. From the bottom of my soul, thank you. I'm especially grateful nobody was killed. May you continue on the path of peace. What compels these monsters is of no consequence. It's not up to us to judge what they deserve. That's very diplomatic of you, sir. Um, right, excellent. Oh, we've nearly leveled up our street cred by the looks of it, which is a few points off. I'm a little bit confused by the dialogue options there. I would have thought that his brother would have gotten a mention at some point or other, but apparently not. Right, Tinnitus, music review. An attempt? <laughs> right, so I've never had a problem like this before. I learned members of the Maelstrom gang perceive the music from their fave band Tinnitus differently to the average user. Those crazy uber-crone motherfuckers describe these tunes with terms like complexity, range, and depth of sound. <clears throat> These aren't quite the words I would use. Music can contain noise, but in this case, the noise does not contain music. Uh, I I don't know, that, that's the, the best I can describe it. Now, I've got two leading theories on this. Theory number one, since Tinnitus only plays at the Totentans, the acoustics could be the cause. Problem. Maelstrom's a gang of hyper-violent psycho scumbags. I'm not going to rust, uh, rust my good rep by jamming out one of their live shows. How can I confirm my theory if I don't go to check it out firsthand? Theory number two, hallucinatory agents. Maybe Tinnitus has its own homebrew chemical cocktail designed to pair with their music for some whole experience. To be honest, I don't think I want to find out because if number two is true, then I'll be risking a drug-induced nervous system meltdown for the sake of music science journalism. That really worth it, Tunes? Jesus, guys, music doesn't need to be this complicated. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I believe we've heard about this Totentans uh, once before. It's, uh, I believe it's a Maelstrom run nightclub. Oh, how many was that? Nearly 600 eddies? Nice. What is this? Fenrir. Rare iconic submachine gun. Interesting. Okay. Ooh. Uh, you just received an iconic weapon along with a set of iconic crafting specs. Yes, we've seen this before when we picked up, uh, what's it called? Dying Knight, our iconic pistol. When we collected it from Wilson in Mega Building 10. Um, so we don't need to go through that again. Looks like there's a couple of shards to uh, take a little nosy through. Let's have a look at this here terminal. See if we've got anything else. Uh, more junk. We've seen this one before. Forever Young. Yes, the, uh, the key to eternal youthfulness. <laughs> right, did we miss anything over here? Yes, we did. Don't mind me there, sir. 600 eddies. Nice. Getting a decent bit of converse, uh, conversation and compensation for this little job. What have we got here? Understanding your team. Why do they... Why do the Maelstrom possess this? In a lockup where they torture people and forcefully install cyberware. I don't know if I like where this is going. The teenage years are truly the most difficult period in a person's life. Not only is it a time of enormous hormonal changes to the brain, but also a time of searching for one's own identity. The teen starts to seek authority figures outside the family, most often among their peers, but also among celebrities, rocker boys, and even fixers or mercenaries. To become an authority figure to teens, all you really need to do is have a unique style, maybe throw in a few nice phrases criticizing the system, and most importantly, convince the teenager that you, and only you, understand. <laughs> What do we have here? Caught in the maelstrom. Ooh. I'm stood in the middle of Totentans. There it is again. My knuckles white, tightly gripped an Achilles M179E rifle. It was shoved into my hands just seconds before the attack. My face, arms, and sin leather jacket soaked in the blood and brain matter of the psycho I had just shot. My contact, a 30-year-old maelstromer with a green mohawk, patted me on the shoulder. Man, Phil, you ain't half shit. He, he tells me appreciatively. <laughs> Took you for a pussy bitch, but gotta admit you got some steel-clad balls after all. And don't worry about this sad scrap heap. If there ain't at least 20 bodies, you can't call it a maelstrom party. What had already been an unsettling experience took a turn to a whole other level. The other maelstromers continued to mock me, but I could detect a tone of approval through all the vocal distortion. My mohawk contact even proposed that they install me... Uh, in me one of their distinct rudimentary implants. Fortunately, they didn't have in mind their I uh, iconic optics suite, so I accepted. My popularity continued to grow. 
No way you'll get the Maelstrom mug so easy, he laughs. That tech's only for initiates. We pluck out their eyes and peel back the skin. Oh, no anesthetics. You survive, you're in. No. So that's the, that's the split. What was it? Split optic stem or split optic nerve operation that they were doing in the Heaven Med Center uh, a couple of videos back. No anesthetic. That's, oh, jeez. I mean, if you go through that and still come out sane on the other end, then you deserve to be uh, <laughs> in a gang of psychos. Actually, I'm not, I'm not sure that works. With the atmosphere now more relaxed, I asked if the rumours had been true. Do they accept contract killings? My mohawk source nodded with enthusiasm. Oh, fuck yeah. We make good scratch and it's a great morale booster. You know, machines ain't bothered with a mess of feelings. And that's what we aim for. Doing hit jobs like that help us gouge out all the gooey emotions we still got left. Recently, this one guy got all whiny and snot-nosed just because we'd roasted some kid. I told him, I said, dude, you better relive some suppressor BD and fast or boss man's gonna blow your head off. The gonk should have fucking listened. Oh, no way. So you show any remorse for anything that you do whilst you're in the Maelstrom gang, you get, well, <laughs> your head blown off. As I listened to his explanations and anecdotes, I realised that amusement clearly must not be one of their blacklisted emotions. And then I couldn't help but wonder, are machines capable of laughter? Whoa, I'm, I'm intrigued as to who the hell that, that was actually written by. Who decided to willingly integrate themselves into the Maelstrom? Craziness, craziness. It's like the, the crazy-ass Louis Theroux of the future. Except with extra crazy. Okay, um, right, let's leave this sad place behind us. Uh, I want to head back over where we came from, in fact. Uh, because I want to check out those stores. Uh, so, as I mentioned, there's a... What is there? There's a weapon store, a drug store, and a food store. Hmm. Interesting. Now, stop my stamina bar depleting just before it hit the end. That should have netted me an athletics bonus. Let's try it again. Uh, I'm also going to quickly check in with the... Uh, the Biku brother that, uh, that we encountered. I'm just going to completely run past him for now because I want to run this stamina bar down. And stop. Hmm. Well, I'm sure this was working before. Normally, you get an instant uh, athletics bonus. Or perhaps because we've leveled up a little bit further, it takes, uh, it takes more sprints what like happened? that. <gasps> Did you find my brother? Well, it just so happens, sir. Of course I found him. He's safe and sound, just needs to catch his breath. Thank you. The universe will reward you for your good deeds. I... I should not have given to base emotions, but I feel such a great relief that he is unharmed. I think you can allow yourself that. Well, you are most welcome. And I sincerely hope the universe does get round to uh, rewarding me sooner rather than later. Right, let's uh, let's check out these stalls. So we've got a pharmaceutical store. Um, <clears throat> oh wait, no, that's a, <laughs> that's a bar. That's not what I'm after. There's a huge arrow pointing my way. Let's actually pay pay it some heed. Oh, here we go. Oh well, this is uh, this is quaint. Look at this. Oh, you've got a, a lovely glass countertop here, and somebody has to ruin it with a sticker. Hello there. Wait, got a medical license? Why? <laughs> Why would I rock up asking that? I'm intrigued now. Wouldn't happen to be medically certified, would you? Certified? Well, yeah, of course. <laughs> you see, I used to uh, fly with the trauma team. Yeah, junior paramedic, six months. Wouldn't believe the things I've seen. Yeah, wouldn't believe it, mate. I'd like to see what you can do for me. Plenty, I'm sure. Right, let's see what uh, he actually has on offer. Now, oh, interesting. I think one of these two might be the final item that goes uh, along my new quick slots. Let's see. Here we go. Capacity booster. Increases carrying capacity by 50%. I'm pretty certain that is the item that slots into um, the, the, the very last bonus slot. Although, now I'm looking at it, I'm not entirely sure that I need it. it Last half an hour, though, so it's pretty uh, powerful. And 1800 second duration increases max stamina by 50%. Hmm. That could be of some use. It's 1125 eddies, though. Although, saying that, oh my god, I've just noticed we've got nearly 27,000 ourselves. Huh. Uh, right, let's have a look and see what else they've got. So, they've got epic item components, they've got max dogs, 
Max Dogs? Max Docs. Rare item components. Okay. Common item components. And um, they've got several crafting specs as well, but unfortunately, I'm street credited out of them. Max Dark Mark 2. Bounce Back Mark 2. Right. The Power Booster and the Capacity Booster are very interesting. I wonder. Do you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and buy one of these. Just to see if it does also slip into the last uh, slot of my quick bud. Oh, hello! Oh, excellent! So it's slotted right in between the health booster. Oh, of course it makes sense now. It's slotted right in between the health booster and the um, the RAM, the Cyberdeck RAM booster. Awesome! So let's see, that's hold B and press down. Nice! Do you know what? Whilst I'm here and whilst I'm flush with, flush with cash, I might as well get one of these as well. <laughs> Purely to complete the set. There we go. We've got a full quick bar, ladies and gentlemen. Marvellous. This is rather a nice little place. It's got a bit of an atmosphere to it, hasn't it? Ha <laughs> uh, Right, we've got a food... But, uh, Fucking hell! All right. <laughs> Don't go ruining the quaint atmosphere with your foul language, young lady. Let's go and quickly uh, visit the scop vendor. I mean, the food vendor. You're a kid. Um... You're a kid. Aren't you a little young to run a business? Someone in the family's got to be the scop winner. <laughs> I can count and I've got good hands. All you need. Well, I'm glad you've got good hands because you'll need those good fingers to do the counting on. That's apparently so important. Why is, why is counting important when making food? Anyway. Cooking up anything good today? I don't deal in anything less. Got to respect yourself and your customers too. <laughs> you've got an attitude, little... Uh, little man, little woman? I'm not entirely sure if that was a boy or a girl. Pop turd! That sounds appealing. So, let's see. Uh, we've got... Um, I don't know why I'm looking at the different varieties of food, because it all has exactly the same effect. As you go up in tiers, so... Let's see. Common increases health by 5%, and out of combat health regen by 5% per second, uh, whereas it goes up to 10 and 15%. Oh, wait. No. No, that, that, that's, that's beverages. Try again. Uh, it goes up to... Oh, so that adds in combat health regen. Boost by 20%. Uh, yeah, anyway. Uh, food and drink boosts regen for health and uh, and stamina. We knew that already. Uh, I just wanted to take a look to see if they had any uh, sort of interesting items. And in fact, the vendor turned out to be more interesting than the uh, stuff being sold. Right, the weapons vendor looks like it's on the ground floor, but I'm interested as to what's actually up here. Uh, oh, okay, it's some sort of self-storage system, I guess? Okay, weapons! Please, I need to be alone. Need to be alone? Well, <laughs> why are you manning a store then? I'm actually quite impressed. I got, is that an HMG? Jesus, dude, you're dealing some heavy machinery here. Look at all those! Looking at you, can't help thinking retail just ain't your hobby. Ain't your calling. You wanna buy? Buy. You wanna talk? Fuck off. <laughs> you are not the friendly side. I'd like to buy some iron. So buy some. Okay, uh... Let's have a look and see what... He's got quite the range, actually, hasn't he? I might go through by category just to sort of break it down a bit. So weapons... Uh, I like street cred for some of these. Looks like he's got... Uh, was that smart? Yeah, smart SMG, a power shotgun. Right. He's got some uh, some nice-looking stuff, actually. Kenshin, Yukimura. All right. Uh, <laughs> description there, elegance in lethality. Lovely. Right, doesn't sell any bladed weapons by the looks of things, which makes me sad. Um, we've got a skill shard for assault. Gains XP for the assault skills. 9,000 eddies, though. Pretty pricey. Any funky-looking grenades? We've got... Mm, we've got a crafting spec, I think, for frag grenades. We need to look at crafting very soon. I know I keep saying that, but we, we really do need to look at crafting very soon. We've got combat amps pacifier which increases crit damage and then various sites and scopes okay standard fare thank you very much for your time uh and for wasting it so diligently right um that's about it we probably got a couple of generic yeah we've got some generic stands here by the looks of things uh, uh i can't actually get to the vendor but in theory 
this vendor should vend things. Wait, is that like a Robo Batman on the? Oh no, it's a, it's a dog in a police outfit. Kali Express. Wait, why does that ring a bell? Kali Express. Okay, it's just a general store by the looks of it. Oh. How funny, this vending machine sells cell phones. How curious. Right, there's likely nothing much else of use here apart from maybe an odd shard. Ooh. Ah, wonder. Wait, what do you sell? General crap by the looks of it. What have you got there? A non disclosure agreement? <laughs> a standard document that prohibits a lot and offers little in return. That sounds uh, rather, rather fitting. A soldering iron, a guitar pick. Vinyl record by uh, that Johnny Silverhand guy, by the looks of it. <laughs> As if anyone listens to him anymore. Right, anyway. Um, let's leave things there, unless this is anywhere of interest. Hey, you need something? Uh, <laughs> are you speaking to me through that barrier? No, I think we're good. I think we're good. I think we're going to take a break there, guys. Thanks very much for joining me. I think next time I would like to... Let's take a look at the map and see where we are and what's going on. I think I would like to head to Afterlife. I think it's about time we caught up with Dex and Jackie. I think seeing as this is on the way, we'll head here to begin with, to this reported crime, as it's just around the corner, and then head over to Afterlife. Let me see, is there... There's no specific time that we have to go there, so unlike Lizzie's bar, where we had to arrive between 6pm and 6am. So, we'll head over there next time. But for now, if you'd like to leave a like or care to leave a comment, you know what to do. Head on down below, and I will see you next time, guys. Thanks very much. Bye-bye now.